The main purpose of transmission line tower is to hold the conductor, which is transmitting the power from generating station to distribution end. As the conductors are bare and carrying the power at high voltage need to hold it at required height as per statutory requirements moreover the structure shall be safe, reliable and shall withstand all the climatic loads during the expected life of line. A transmission tower, also known as an electricity pylon or simply a pylon in British English and as a hydro tower in Canadian English, is a tall structure, usually a steel lattice tower, used to support an overhead power line. Transmission towers support the high voltage conductors of overhead power lines from the generating station switchyard right up to the source substations and satellite substations located near populated areas. Their shape, height and sturdiness mechanical strength depend on the stresses to which they are exposed. Towers do not transmit electricity themselves unless lightning strikes the ground wire strung along the top of the structure. This cable is designed to protect conductors by allowing lightning discharges to reach the ground through the tower. Types of transmission line. In transmission line determina determination of voltage drop, transmission efficiency, line loss etc. are important things to design. These values are affected by line parameter R, KEL and C of the transmission line. Lengthwise transmission lines are three types. Short transmission line. A short transmission line is classified as a transmission line with a length less than 80 kilometers or 50 miles, voltage level less than 69 kV, capacitance effect is negligible, only resistance and inductance are taken in calculation capacitance is neglected. Medium transmission line. A medium transmission line is classified as a transmission line with a length more than 80 kilometers or 50 miles but less than 250 kilometers or 150 miles. Operational voltage level is from 69 kV to approximate 133 kV. Capacitance effect is present. Distributed capacitance form is used for calculation purpose. Long transmission line. A long transmission line is classified as a transmission line with a length more than 250 kilometers or 150 miles. Voltage level is above 133 kV. Line constants are considered as distributed over the length of the line. Transmission towers, electrical pylons carry large amounts of high voltage current over long dist distances. These structures typically stand 50 to 150 feet tall, 16M to 45M, with the tallest towers being 1,247 feet or 380M tall. Transmission towers connect power plants to a series of substations, which allows one bulk power region of the grid to connect to another. Higher voltages on power lines require space between each line and other objects, allowing people, vehicles, and other equipment to move freely beneath. The tower's live conductors are supported by insulators, the length of which increases with the increasing voltage of the circuit. For this reason, transmission towers usually stand 50 feet to 150 feet high, 16M to 45M, or higher if spanning waterways or other natural chasms. Most tower structures are manufactured from steel, but some are manufactured from concrete, wood, or even ductile iron. Wooden distribution poles, found in local neighborhoods unless using underground power lines, are generally about 40 feet 12 m tall. Transmission voltages are usually between 23,000 volts to 765,000 volts. Transmission tower conductors are usually manufactured from steel reinforced aluminium cable ACSR aluminium conductor steel reinforced and are almost always arranged in sets of three for three phase alternating current transmission. A fourth neutral cable may be used for transmission over short distances, but this is not common. Conductors are grouped by phase. There could be one, one conductor line per group three total, two conductor lines per group six total, or more. Groups are installed in multiples of 3 i.e. 3, 6, 9, and may be arranged in a triangular shape or parallel to each other. Three-way grouping increases transmission efficiency. However, if you look at the top of a transmission tower, you may see one or two smaller, solitary wires. These wires have several names, overhead ground wire, static wire, or pilot wire, but all describe the same wire. An overhead ground wire static wire pilot wire absorbs or deflects lightning strikes, conveying electricity safely to the ground. Under normal conditions, the overhead wire does not carry electricity its voltage potential is zero. Some overhead ground wires are grouped with fiber optic cables that convey telecommunication data. Essentially made of glass, fiber optic cables cannot conduct electricity and are not affected by light lightning strikes. Alternatively, you may notice fiber optics running a few feet 1M below transmission conductors. Adding telecommunication lines increases the return on investment associated with building transmission networks. 
Fiber optic lines may be operated by the utility or leased to cable or phone companies. The structures commonly used on transmission lines are either lattice type or pole type. Lattice structures are usually composed of steel angle sections. Poles can be wood, steel, or concrete. Each structure type may be self-supporting or guide supported by cables. Pole type structures are generally used for voltages of 345 kV or less, while lattice steel structures are favored for higher voltage levels. Wood pole structures can be economically used for relatively short transmission distances and lower voltages. The configuration of a transmission line tower depends upon many factors, some are listed below, the number and type of conductors. The length of the insulator assembly. The minimum clearance is to be maintained between, between conductors and the tower. The location of ground wires with respect to the outermost conductor. The mid-span clearance required considering the dynamic behavior of conductors and lightning protection of the line. The minimum clearance of the lowest conductor above ground level. The factors governing the height of a tower are minimum permissible ground clearance H1. Maximum sag H2. Vertical spacing between the top and bottom conductors H3. Vertical clearance between the ground wire and top conductor H4. The total height of tower is given by the sum of all four factors H1 plus H2 plus H3 plus H4. Tower configuration, depending upon the requirements of the transmission system, various line configurations must be considered ranging from single circuit horizontal to multi-circuit vertical structures, with single or V-strings in all phases, as well as any combination of these. Also, for very high voltages 500 kV and above, conductors are bundled to reduce corona emission and reduce line inductance. The configuration of a transmission line tower depends upon many factors, some of the most important are listed below, voltage, number of circuits, type of conductors, type of insulators, possible future addition of new circuits, tracing of transmission line, selection of tower sites, selection of rigid points, selection of conductor configuration, selection of height for each tower. Towers are classified according to their use, independent of the number of conductors they support. A tower must withstand mechanical loads from a range of directions e.g. straight, at an angle etc. To simplify tower design and ensure an overall economy in cost and maintenance, Tower designs are generally confined to a few standard types. Transmission tower types. There are several types of transmission tower in many variations, but they can be roughly grouped as suspension towers. Conductors are suspended between two towers using suspension insulators. Terminal towers. Conductors from a transmission line are connected to a substation or underground cable via a tower's strain insulators. Tension towers. The tower can cater for the weight of the cables and axial loading strain in a horizontal direction.